Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, praise the Lord, everyone. Let's stand tonight and go before the Lord with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Giving God the praise for being in this house tonight. Come on, let's all go to the Lord together right now. Precious Heavenly Father, God, how we love you, Lord, how we thank you. Uh, Lord, how we glorify and magnify you. Uh, Lord, for you and you alone, God, you're worthy to be praised. Uh, Lord, we thank you, God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, God. Oh, and how, uh, Lord, your blessing that you bestow upon us, God. Uh, Lord, but most of all, for being our Heavenly Father. God, we give you praise. We love you, Lord. We thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Turn and greet somebody tonight. If you've greeted that person, amen. Greet somebody else. Hallelujah. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Then let's all sing out. Worship the Lord tonight. Amen.
I look back over my life and I see what God has brought me through. Hallelujah. He's never lost a battle. Amen. And he never will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to that great mighty God in prayer tonight. Amen. Knowing that he sees our needs. We see several not here tonight. Sister Linda, very sick. Remember her in prayer. Sister Foster is sick tonight. Sister Sherry's still under the weather and also uh, taking care of a sick grandchild. And we need to remember Kevin in prayer. Kevin got feeling bad last night. I guess drove himself to the uh, hospital. Uh, they found out today that Kevin has one main one artery that's completely blocked, and he did have a heart attack last night. So we need to pray for Kevin. They said the good news is he's got big arteries, and the other two are uh, keeping the blood flowing, but they're still keeping him to see if they're going to have to do or they're going to check tomorrow to see if they got to do more uh, procedure on him. So remember Kevin in prayer tonight that God would move upon him. Amen. We know that God's a healer. Isn't that right? Amen. So let's pray about this. God sees and knows every need. Brother Kramer's got another procedure coming up. We need to continue to pray for him. Amen. And let's just pray for one another, that God would strengthen us. You can look around. As I said, several others not here tonight. I don't know about everybody, but I'm glad I'm in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. The travel. Travel went well over the weekend. We appreciate that. Sister Kim will be back, Lord willing, on Saturday. Pray that she has safe travel and uh, God would just keep his hand. I miss those grandbabies. I miss the ones that are here, but I also miss those that are there. Amen. So uh, we we uh, thankful, though, thankful that we have had time to be with them a little bit. Appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate those that stayed here, amen, and took care of the church. I'm glad God is still God, no matter who's here and who's not here. Amen. God is still God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brothers, for preaching and teaching Sunday. Greatly appreciate the Word of God. Amen. Appreciate what came forth in the service, the worship. Thank God for those that were here. Amen. Church, we got to, got to keep that Torch burning, isn't that right? Amen. So people might come in. We had some visitors, I heard. We're glad of that. Amen. We'll just keep praying that God would have his will. you got a prayer request tonight. Let's take them to the Lord in prayer. Amen. God sees and knows right now every situation and every need. Amen. If there's anything I forgot, God knows it already. Let's go to the Lord together right now. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord, right now. God, we're calling on you. Lord, we know that you're the healer of our body and the lover of our soul. Lord, come down and move in a mighty way. Lord, let your will be done. Oh, I pray, God, that you would just move and have your way. Lord, you see the sick, the afflicted, the hurting God. Lord, but we know that you are more than able to come down. Lord, to heal their sickness, God, to bind up, and Lord, those that are broken tonight, those, God, troubled in their spirit, Lord, we pray, move and have your way. Those troubled in their mind, God, be the mind regulator, Lord, be their joy and be their peace. Oh, I pray, God, Lord, for those that are not serving you, Lord, stir them, God, stir them in these last days and let them come before it's too late. Lord, the backslider and those that have never come, Lord, I pray, Lord, let the houses of God be filled, Lord, to overflowing. Let the waters of baptism be stirred, God, and the altars be full. Lord, and when those are saved, bring in more souls and add to the kingdom, add to the church daily. Lord, such as should be saved, oh, I pray, Lord, let us do your will. Move tonight every need, spoken and unspoken, God. Oh, the prayer list, God. You see it. You know it, God. Lord, you know every sickness, God, from this heart attack. Lord God, to the common cold, and we know that you're more than able. Heal it, God. Deliver from it. You're the only one that can. God, we give you praise. We love you, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad you know him by name tonight? Amen.
you speak that name tonight. Oh, I know the peace speaker. The Bible says that he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And the waves and the, began to crash over the side of that boat. And the Bible says that it was almost full, and they were about ready to sink. And they went and woke up the master. Carest thou not that we perish? And Sister Brock, I can see him step on the bow of that little ship. Clouds dark and stormy. The wind boisterous, the sea tempestuous. And he just simply says, peace, be still. Anybody been in that storm? <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Somebody might be in it right now. I don't know. Oh, I just feel something right now. Come on now. Oh, it's Wednesday night, Brother Riggs. I don't care what night it is. I didn't get to be at church Sunday. Amen. You've been in that, maybe you're in that storm right now, and Jesus is wanting to step on the bow of that little ship of yours. No matter how dark it may seem, no matter how hard the wind may be blowing, and the cares of life may be filling up your little ship, Jesus simply wants to say, peace. Peace, be still. I'm still God. Come on, he's still God. He's still in control tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Would you just dare give it over to him tonight? Whatever it is, you know what it is. You know who it is tonight. It's just between you and the Lord. Amen. It's just Wednesday night anyway. Amen. Come on. When he says peace, be still. They have to. See, it's not just the winds and the waves. Whatever it is has to obey. Oh, I know. I know him. He'll do it for you. You know how I know he's done it for me time and time and time again. Oh, sing it again unto the Lord now. This is between you and him. Oh, I know. Only say that if you know him tonight. Ah, uh, if you don't, find him tonight. I know him by One more time, Brother Jones. One more time. Hallelujah. I know. Right now. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. I give it to you, Lord. Come on. Can you just give it over to him tonight? Hallelujah, Lord. I know the peace speaker. Hallelujah. Come on, can we give him a hand clap of praise tonight? Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Ah, come on. I think we can go longer than that tonight. Ah, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen, amen. You know, last night, I guess I didn't watch it, but there was a State of the Union address. And whenever the President of the United States walks in, regardless of party, most of the time, most of the time, the whole Congress stands and they begin to applaud when the President walks in, whether they like him or not, whether they agree with policies or not. Amen. You know what? Jesus is here tonight. Amen. I agree with him tonight, don't you? Hallelujah. I think he's greater than any president that we'll ever have. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he's worthy tonight. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley? Amen. It's the blood. Hallelujah. Oh, don't get me started tonight. It's the blood. Hallelujah. And it's never lost its power. Amen. That saving power, that delivering power. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Ah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I think we could almost have church tonight. Amen. Praise God. Well, Brother Riggs, we've got this and we've got... I want Jesus to carry me through. Amen. I need Jesus. Anybody need Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. I need Jesus. Yes, I do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can be seated, I guess, if you want. You don't have to. Don't forget. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday school, invite someone out. Hallelujah. Sunday night church. Don't forget about that as well. Nothing real big coming up the next week or so. Amen. Grab a calendar. Make sure you got one. You know what's happening. You know what's getting ready to happen. Got some Bible studies coming up and some prayer groups coming up. Amen. So make sure you're aware of all those things. Know them. Amen. Be a part of them. Amen. Come on, let's be a part of this, of this saving generation. Hallelujah. This group of people that we're going to see come in and be saved. Anybody agree with me tonight? Amen. We have had, how many ministers has come by in the last little bit and they see what's going on behind us and they start talking about, they get excited about it. I think it's time the church gets excited about it. Amen. That we can see, praise the people, well, I don't want that back there and don't want, come on church, there's souls to be harvested right out there. Amen. Amen. You know, they plant crops in this field all the time. There's a harvest that's being planted. Come on. We need to be reapers of the harvest. Hallelujah. And allow souls to come in and be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Sister Beth. Sure. We do that still here. We still do that around here.
Amen. Aren't you glad it's not form and it ain't fashion? Hallelujah. <laughs> Genuine. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's stand tonight. Those that are not standing already, we're going to bring our tithes and offering unto the Lord tonight. They're going to give us a good song. It's Youth Alive Night, not only uh, VBS Wednesday, so all those going next door. Amen. But give as the Lord lays on your heart tonight. Amen. Jesus is mine. Amen. Is Jesus yours tonight? Amen. Jesus is mine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many is so appreciative of the love of God? Amen. This month of February, there's a lot that's talked about love. We know for God so loved the world. Amen. We know that God loves us. Isn't that right? Amen. The title of our lesson tonight, or our message tonight, whatever it turns out to be, is this. Love at what cost? Love at what cost? We're not talking about the love of God. We just said we know he loves us. Amen. Where is our love for the Lord tonight? I want to look at one account in particular to start with. So go with me to Acts, the sixth chapter. We're going to hit about four verses here, just kind of highlight them, read down through them before we get to the text in the seventh chapter. Verse number five, we know what's happening here in the sixth chapter. The disciples now, uh, they decided that they needed to appoint some people to take care of those that were in need. And how many knows it's important who we appoint to things? Amen. We can't just put anybody in charge of things and expect it to be blessed. Uh, I was just telling uh, Sister Trinity and Sister Kim, we were on a FaceTime, a FaceTime, whatever, meeting, Zoom meeting or whatever with Sister Kim while ago, and we were talking about some things, and I was talking about a guy that uh, I don't know what his faith is, but something that he said that I was listening to the other day he said, we take Scripture too many times, Sister Angie. He said, we will take them sometimes out of context or we will only read part of the Scripture. And he began to talk about that Scripture that says God will give us the desires of our heart. And he said, and that Scripture does say that. But he said, you have to read the Scriptures before that. Amen. And what in what context that is being said. God's not going to just give you the desires of your heart if it does not line up with God. Isn't that right? Amen. And he went back and he read those scriptures and he said, so now let me break that down a little bit. He said, what that saying is, once you come in line with the things of God, once you become, amen, what God wants you to be, then God will make your heart desire the things that, that you should want. Thus, God will give you the desires of your heart. How many wants God's desires to be your desires tonight? Amen. So in this chapter, they needed some guys to wait tables. They needed some people to take care of widows and those that were in need. And it says that in the fifth verse, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And I know it goes on and reads the rest of those names, but I want to focus upon one tonight. Stephen, 
a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many knows we've got to have the Holy Ghost and we've got to have faith? Amen. He was just going to wait tables. It doesn't matter. I mean, he wasn't going to do anything but be meals on wheels for uh, the, the, the widows of the region. Amen. How many knows that the doorkeepers need to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Come on. Amen. The greeters need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Amen. He was just waiting tables. But here it says, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Verse 10 says, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Amen. Well, Brother Riggs, I can only be a preacher if I stand in the pulpit. I can only, amen, minister the word of God. A friend of mine today sent I'll just tell you, Brother Tim Bailey sent me a, a, a message, a text message, and for him to text something as long as he did, he was talking about uh, Aaron Rodgers, the football player, said he's going to take four days to sit in darkness and silence and meditate and find himself a happy place. And he said, Brother Tim said, and that's the problem with the world today, they, they're cleaving to darkness to try to find happiness and running away from the light of God where there is real joy and real peace. And I said, that's it. Preach it, brother. I said, preach it, preacher, or something like that. And he texts back, ha, ha, that's really funny. Because if you know Brother Tim, he's very shy. He's very backward. He's very quiet most of the time. Amen. But I tell you what, we all need to preach the Word of God. You go into your job, you preach the Word of God. That's it, Sister Blanche. Your life preaches it. Either preaches a good message or it don't. And don't think the world don't know. And it says, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Didn't matter what his appointment was, that he was just waiting tables, that he was not, he was not one of the chosen twelve. He was not a man in the inner circle. Amen. He was waiting tables, but he was a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And now it says that he spoke with wisdom. Amen. That they could not resist the words by which he spake, because he did not speak them according to what Stephen thought, but he spoke them according to what the will of God was because you cannot be full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost and speak something against the will of God. It does not work. When you speak, oh my, my, my. When you speak against the word of God, guess what? You're no longer full of the Holy Ghost. God's not schizophrenic. He's not going to talk bad about himself. Amen, right? Praise the Lord. So that means when we walk, hmm, in discord to his spirit. We just said, you all agreed with me. When you walk into work, you're going to preach a message one way or the other, right? I told you years ago, it, made, it worried me, Sister Lorna, because this, this sinner come up to me at work and asked me if I was having a bad day, Brother Cable. I said, why? He said, because the look on your face. And I thought, oh, man, the last thing I want is that guy to think that I'm having a bad day. This is the guy that grumbled and complained about everything, Sister Masters, and he's asking me if I'm having, what message am I preaching right now? So if I walk contrary to the Holy Ghost, guess what? Am I still full of the Holy Ghost? Come on. Amen. Verse 15. And all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Sister Blanche, think about what we just read. This man, this description of this man, what they said about him, what they saw in him, the things that they witnessed with their own eyes. It said they even looked up on him, and it was like they were looking at an angel, the face of an angel, his countenance. 
Amen was like the countenance of an angel. But something happens in verse 7. Stephen begins to open his mouth and begins to speak unto them, amen, through the unction of the Holy Ghost about who Jesus really was and about what had happened, amen, in the time before when the prophets, amen, and the priests and the things that they had done unto those people and the wickedness that had come into their heart and what God had done over and over. And it goes on and on until we get down to the 54th verse and this one sister trinity that they listened to his words and they they couldn't resist his words and they looked upon him and they saw him to be an angel because he was filled with the holy ghost amen it says when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth have you ever been bad man enough to bite to mad at somebody bad enough to bite them they ran up on him and begin to gnash upon It doesn't say they bit him. They gnashed upon him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried with a loud voice, and stopped their ears and ran up on him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid, their, laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Love at what cost? We know how much God loves us. We know that he came and died and rose again. We know all those things. Hereby perceive we the love of God that he laid down his life for the brethren. Isn't that right? All those things. How much do we love God tonight? You know, I'm going to have to stand next to Stephen one day. I don't know if I'll be right next to him, but he's going to be there. How much did you love me, Joe Riggs? How much were you willing to go through? You couldn't face this little adversity. I think about that so often. I think about accounts like this. And I, when the Lord brought my attention back to this the other night, amen, and I began to think. Matter of fact, he woke me up, Brother Kramer, the other morning, and he began to talk to me about how much do we love him? How much, amen, do we care for him? How much, amen, what do we set our affections and our desires upon? Amen. How much are we willing to do for the things of the natural compared to the things of the spiritual? Church, we, ne we better fall in love with Jesus. If we want to make heaven, you don't have to, but you're not going to heaven if you don't fall in love with him. You can't like him. You can't lust after him. You can't do the Holy Ghost huck a buck good enough. Oh, I seen one the other night, Sister Angie, they were getting ready to shout. I was watching a video, some church service, and the guy made sure he had enough room to do his little dance. I thought, brother, you can't dance good enough to get into heaven. Come on, you shouldn't have to stretch before. <laughs> if you have to stretch, it's not in the spirit, honey, let me tell you right now. Amen. I wish we shouted hard enough that we were achy, sore the next morning because we, we threw something out of joint. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe Jacob wrestled with that angel and wouldn't let go until God reached and put that angel, put his hand up on him and knocked that, that bone out of joint. But yet, Sister Lorna, he did not let go, and he wrestled with him anyway. What are we facing today? What adversity is too great? I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing greater than the love of God. And if we truly love him, amen, nothing can stand between us and him nobody no thing come on amen Stephen was willing to die he could have recanted brother Nate he could have stopped it he could have said oh I need to lighten up they're getting a little angry 
I seen one pick up a stone. I better back off a little bit. They're watching me on, on live stream. I better not preach the truth. Hello. I better, not, I better preach the truth because I love them enough. Amen. That if it, come on, if it hurts, it hurts. I'd rather it hurt now for a little while than hurt for all eternity. Amen. Where's our love tonight? Where's our desire? You've heard me tell stories about Kim and I dated and driving in snowstorms and all those kind of things, and you all have stories like those kind of things, things that you've done for things that you love. There's people, Brother Caleb, there's people that will camp out in front of Best Buy or whatever it is that's going to have back, you know, now you just order it online and you don't have to do all that stuff, but they would camp out in the snow and in the rain because they wanted to be the first one to buy whatever popular thing was coming out the next day, and you couldn't get it except you had to be the first hundred in line or whatever. And don't women look down your nose at your husband for doing that over some gadget. There were men fighting each other physically, fist fighting each other in Walmart because they were trying to buy you pioneer woman pots and pans <laughs> sister Angie saw it got an eyewitness fist fighting because they had to buy their wife willing to go to jail that tells you something doesn't it sisters they'd rather go to jail than face you without having those pots and pans <laughs> I don't know if that's love or fear <laughs> Self-preservation. <laughs> but sometimes we will fall in love with something so much we've, we've got to. We, we've, we'll, we'll get watching something, whether it's on, online or on television or listening to a program or talking to someone on the phone, and you'll look up at the clock and you're like, wow, I've got to, I've got to go to bed. I've got to get up, and I'm only going to get nine hours of sleep. I'm only going to get eight hours of sleep. I'm only going to get five hours of sleep, but I'm still doing what I'm doing. When's the last time we said, you know what, I got lost in prayer? I'm only going to get five hours of sleep, but it don't matter. Come on. What are we in love with tonight? What are we willing to push back? And we're going to have to, people like this, amen, people that when Saul walked into their house and you denounce him or we're going to fillet your children or we're going to boil you in oil. Maybe it wasn't just uh, Saul, I should say. Maybe it wasn't just him. But these things took place uh, in the early church. Uh, and guess what? I believe it was that, Brother Kramer, that when, when Saul was knocked down on that road to Damascus uh, and he had seen these things before, uh, he said, look, there was no one more zealous than me when it come to the things of God. He thought he was doing the will of God. But something happened. Sister Poe, I don't know what it is. Maybe one day I'll ask him when I see him if I care. At that point, I probably won't care. But it might just be a question one day in eternity. I might remember it and say, Saul or Paul, what made you change your mind? And maybe he'll tell me. But I just think there was something. Maybe it was just Stephen alone. I don't know. But something triggered in him. Amen. These people are different. They've got a kind of love. Amen. That can't se I can't separate them from this God. We separated him from those prophets before. But there's something about Jesus. And when he's on the road and he says, Lord, who art thou? <laughs> He said, I'm Jesus. Whoo. <laughs> I'm Jesus. My. We're going to have to stand next to these people. How much did you love me? How much did you love me? Did you not ask this? So could you not pray with me an hour? Amen. Jesus told him this. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number 19. He says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. How many knows the things we have in this life is temporal? And I don't care how nice it is. Eventually, it's going to get old. Something's going to happen to it. Sister Dolores, I saw a car the other day a lot like your car, and it was on the back of either a wrecker or a flatbed or something, 
And the only difference between Sister Dolores' car and this car was that one had been wrecked. It very easily could have been Sister Dolores' car. Ice. I don't care how good of a driver you are. Ice. <laughs> Not very many of us can drive good on ice. Most of us can't drive good in the rain or the dry <laughs> or the daylight or the dark. <laughs> Things are temporal. That house that you kept clean for the first six months you moved in, now you want to move out and just leave everything where it is. I told Kim, whoever buys our house is going to, whatever's in that attic, they get it. We haven't had it down for 20 years. You think I'm joking. There's things up there that has not seen the light of day. Sister Beth, we put up some Christmas decorations one year, and they've been in that attic ever since and never have seen the light of day since. One, maybe two years. I don't want to lie, but it was one or two years. That was it. And the girls were little, so little that Marissa probably don't even remember it. By the time she came along, we, were, we had quit caring about that stuff. She'll tell you. She said, my life is a blur. They got all kinds of pictures of Brittany, got several pictures of Kayla. She said, there ain't hardly no pictures of me. My life's a blur. That's what she told us. Don't lay up things on this earth because they're not going to last. One little thing can change that thing that's so important to you. I had a friend growing up, and he had this special cowboy hat. I don't want to tell you Brother Doyle's name because I don't want, oh. He had this hat. He didn't want nobody to touch this hat. It had a snakeskin brim on it. He thought it was the living end. And if you tried to touch, don't touch my hat. Don't touch my hat. He laid down one night and he put that hat on the, hook, on the uh, post of the bed. It fell off. He rolled all over that hat all night long. He got up the next day, and that hat was, he still wore that thing, I tell you what. Things are temporal, folks. They're not going to last. But the thing that's going to last is the thing that we really need to be in love with tonight because it's never going to run out. It's never going to fail. Isn't that right? Jesus is never going to fail. He's never going to run out. Okay, I'm gonna. I told Kim the other night the next person that comes in my office and complains about the price of what I'm selling, something that's going to last, Brother Caleb, probably forever. I walked into a mattress store the other day. Anybody went mattress shopping lately? What do they tell you? About every eight years, you need to buy a new mattress, right? I walked into a mattress store. I said, that's just for the mattress, right? Because it was on one of them beds, you know, that, you know, it's like riding a buck and bronco. It does all these gyrations, and I'm afraid that thing will fold me up and kill me in my sleep. I don't want mattress, mattress. That, Sister Poe, I'm going to have to buy another one, they told me, in eight years. $3,500. Dollars for a mattress. You come and talk to me about buying a piece of rock for $3,500 and gripe about that because it's going to last a lot longer than eight years. Things are temporal. They're not going to last. We gripe about gas prices, don't we? Man, we gripe and we gripe. I'm one that I do it. Oh. Gas is up. Unless your sister Kim, I'll say, what'd you pay for gas? I don't know. I just bought some. She should say, I just put this much in. I'm like, Kim, but it don't matter if you put $20 in. If it's this much, you got this many gallons. If it's that much, yeah, I just put $20 in. I don't know. Be like my mom and my dad owned the, or ran the gas station when they had a gas station. She would she'd say, you know, I just love getting all this free gas. My dad said, it ain't free. I'm paying for it. Somebody's going to pay for it. But we'll gripe about it, right? Have you really figured that out before? If gas goes up 20 cents and you've got a 20-gallon tank, which is a big tank, 
You know how much money you just put in your tank more than if you'd got it? What is that? Four bucks? 20, 20 cents times 20 gallons? That's four dollars, right? We don't think nothing about no four dollars. Only time four dollars gets important is when the offering plate gets passed. <laughs> I can't get four dollars. We don't think about four dollars. Have you went out to eat lately? Have you went to the grocery store lately? And all that stuff's going to run out. I don't care. Sister Kayla went and got groceries the other day. She called Walmart back. She got home, and she had ordered, how many items did you order, sis? We don't want the whole order, just about how many items. We're on the time crunch here. I'm way behind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, how many did you get double of? So she ordered seven things that they gave her two of. They gave her two boxes of fruit snacks. I told her I know a dog that will eat that whole box. My little dog loves fruit snacks. Him and Lorelai share when they come and she comes to our house. Kayla called him. Hey, you gave me double items and didn't charge me. It was like 30 some dollars worth of stuff. She said, I wish they had done that to the meat that I bought, but they didn't give me double meat. They said, hey, it's food. We can't take it back. Thanks for being honest. Just keep it. Kayla, eventually, even though you got two boxes of fruit snacks, it's going to run out. Filled your tank up last week. Guess what? You're probably going to need more gas this week. It's going to run out. As precious as that is, the money that you worked all week for, right? Before you even get your paycheck, you know most of it's already accounted for, right? You got groceries, you got bills, you got gas, you got tithes and offerings, you got, don't forget, it's already allotted. And you've worked for it and worked for it and worked for it, and it's going to run out. But guess what? We'll show back up Monday and do it again. And you'll go to the gas station and you'll do it again. Kayla, you'll go to the grocery again. You'll go out to dinner again, and you'll eat that same meal, and don't matter if it costs double what it costs not very long ago. You'll do it again. Over and over and over and over, and it runs out. Why do we do it? Sometimes it's because we love it. We do it a lot of times because we feel like we have to, but the reason, Sister Beth, we feel like we have to is because it gets us something that we love. We may not love our job, but we love the money that we get so we can do the things that we love, right? So love is still wrapped up in it, and that stuff runs out. It's temporal. God said, lay up not for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And here's the key. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Love at what cost? At what cost? Where's our desire tonight? Where's our desire tonight? I see Sister Jessica back there holding that baby, looking at him. You didn't think you could love anything like that, did you? No. No, you don't. It's, it's different. It's a different, we laugh and we joke around, but it's a different love between your child and you than it is your spouse and you. It's a different love. Not saying it's more, not saying it's less. It's different. That child is part of you. And Brother Caleb looks at that child, and he looks at it differently than he does Sister Jessica because it's part of him. And you will do anything for that child anything. You'll go to work with no sleep because the baby couldn't sleep. Oh, I see it. I see the looks. <laughs> you will. You'll go without things so the child can have things. You will. And there will come a time that you'll want a new outfit or you'll want new shoes. And maybe there's only enough for the child to get a new pair of shoes. And guess what? You'll let that child have those shoes because that's real love. That's love. Where your heart is, where your desires is, that's where your heart will be also. What is our desire tonight? Do we desire the things of the world more than we do the things of God? 
in Joshua, he said this, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, you're going to have to make a choice. You can serve those idols on the other side. You can serve the idols of the wicked people that dwells in this land that we have come through. But he said, you're going to have to make a choice. But as for me and my house, I can't say it for Kim. That's her choice. As for me and my house, I can't say for you. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Because that's my desire. That's my love. Like I said, you can't just like God. You've got to love God. There's a lot of people that, you've heard me say it before, they, they're willing to just have an affair with him. You know, they'll have an affair with him while it's convenient. They have an affair with him that week of camp. Man, how many times... Sister Angie, we grew up, how many times did we see kids come to church camp? And that was the only time you ever saw them at church. The only time they came to church was at the fellowship meeting. It was usually at the end so they could go to Top Hat after church. Honestly. Why did most of them come to Labor Day services? Because they came to check out the girls. They came to hang out with the fellas. That's why they came. You can't just have an affair with God. It can't just be when you want to and, and when it feels good for you. This has got to be something that you love him regardless of what you're going through, regardless of, of what's happening in your life, regardless. We talked about that storm a while ago, those storms that may arise in your life. You've got to love him through all of that if you're going to make it. Like I said, you don't have to. It's your choice. It's your choice. But I believe those that are going to make it are those that are truly in love with God. I know this is real deep. You know why marriages fail? Because they quit loving each other. Ooh, that was deep, wasn't it? You fall out of love. Well, sometimes she just makes me angry. Sometimes she just gets on my nerves. Didn't say you had to like each other all the time. I told most of you this joke the other day, but man went up to the preacher. He said, preacher, he said, my wife is the most hateful woman. We argue all the time. I want to know what to do to keep from arguing with her. He said, all right, next time she starts to argue with you, I want you to take a glass of water, take a big drink, slosh it around in your mouth, and swallow it and see what happens. So he will come in from church, and sure enough, she started in on him. Your clothes are everywhere. This house is a mess. It's your stuff. Da, 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 da. He took a drink of water, sloshed it around in his mouth. She walked away. He's like, wow, that was awesome. Next morning, he got up, and sure enough, you left dirty dishes out. Now there's ants on the counter, and he grabbed that bottle of water, and he took it, angrily sloshed it around in his mouth and swallowed it, and she walked away. Third time, fourth time, you did this, you left this, and he grabbed that water. And next church night, he walked up to the pastor, and he said, brother, he said, it worked. He said, it's amazing. He said, is it the sloshing noise? Does that silence them somehow? Does it put them in a hypnotic trance, the motion of my mouth? He said, no, it just helps you keep your mouth shut for a while. <laughs> See, a lot of sisters in here tonight, brothers. We're outnumbered, I think. It doesn't mean we stop loving each other. But when you fall out of love, when your heart's not there any longer, when the desire for that one isn't there any longer, amen, some of you have been through heartbreak like that, and you've been through, and I'm not talking about puppy love. I'm talking about you've been through real heartbreak, and it's heartbreaking when you're the one that loves and the other one doesn't love you back. Come on. We just said we know he loves us. Let's not break his heart tonight. 
Love at what cost? One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing have I desired. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up on a rock. Amen. Other things are going to fail you. Other things are going to run out. Not God's love. Not God's love. For in the time of trouble, he's not going to say, sorry about that. He says he's going to hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. That doesn't mean in this building. That's in the presence of God, dwelling in that secret place. Hallelujah. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Who is that rock? Amen. What rock are we anchored in today? That rock, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is a chapter on faith. And it's funny, I didn't get to watch uh, the services live, and I didn't get to watch all of any of the services, but I watched a little bit, uh, listened to a little bit of Brother Josh's message the other day at work, and I had already, the Lord had already given me these scriptures, and I actually typed something in here. I don't type a lot of notes usually, but I did type something because I wanted to say something tonight. Sound very deep and profound, so I wanted to make sure and not forget it. <laughs> and then I listened to Brother Josh's message. I'm like, wow. It goes right along with what the Lord gave me to wrap this up tonight. But in this chapter, they call it the Heroes of Faith chapter. And it talks about all the great people, and it mentions them by name, that did mighty things. That's not where I want to go. I want us to jump down to the end, toward the end of this chapter. Go down to verse 33. You know, I said something to my parents a long time ago. You know, you set goals when you're a kid. You know, you want to be a doctor. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be a fireman. You want to whatever it is. You set goals, and you want to be famous. I remember telling my parents one time, I just want my name in the history books. I just want to be in the history books. There's a lot of bad people in history books, though. That's the problem. But then I began to think as I got older, Sister Pam, I got thinking about if there was a newest testament, if there was to be a, a testament written about what goes on in this day that we're living in. I could just see the story written about Brother Paul Leite preaching on the streets in the Philippines. Have you been watching any of those videos? Can't understand anything he's saying, but I understand the spirit that he's saying them with, don't you? Amen. How many is praying for him? Pray for him every day. Pray for him every day. I pray for him every day when he's here too. I pray for him mostly because he's married to Sister Lorna, but I pray for him every day. <laughs> she knows I love her. She knows I'm kidding. Those are my, that's my family. That's your family. But I thought, even if I'm never mentioned, if my name wasn't mentioned, there's a lot of great accounts in the Bible. We don't know their names. The man they refer to as Legion, that was not his name. Nobody knows his name. We don't know his name. The woman that touched the hem of his garment, I know there's Catholic lore that would tell you names, but they tell you a lot of things, and I'm not going to uh, fall back on what they say because Lord knows they haven't never let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. But, but we don't know her name. Over and over and over, great things that happened in the Bible. We don't know their name. Look at this at the end of this, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better 
resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. I love that part. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. He said they went through all this and they did all these things. It doesn't mention, but as I was reading that again, names that I, I thought, well, it's not mentioned in that one by name, but we know who walked into the den of lions. We know who walked into the fiery furnace, but their name isn't even mentioned in this part of the account. And on and on and on, the Shumanite woman and all these, amen, that it's referring to in this account and never mentions their name, said the world's not even worthy of them because of their great faithfulness. And their great faith in God. And it says, Sister Marissa, that they did it without the Holy Ghost. They did it without promise. We don't have an excuse, folks. Where's our desire? One last place. Colossians, very popular, very famous scripture about setting your affections. And I want to finish there. If ye then be risen... Maybe that's where we need to start, if that's where it starts. So that's where, if ye then be risen with Christ. We've died in repentance. We've been buried in his name. Now are we risen a new creature in the Holy Ghost. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. What did Stephen say? He said he looked and he saw the heavens open, and he saw God in the Son of God, standing on the right hand, Jesus on the right hand, the right hand of power, amen. Sitting on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, amen. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That old creature that you used to be, you don't have to be that anymore because now it's been hid with God when you set your affections upon him. When you have been risen a new creature, you're no longer that old creature any longer. Amen. Isn't that right? So if you've been risen, amen, set your affection now upon him. Don't fall out of love with him because when you fall out of love with him, you become that old thing over again. And nobody loves that old thing. You don't even love that old thing. You ever have them days where you can't stand yourself? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I know nobody can stand me because I can't stand myself. I'm in a bad mood and I don't know why. I come in the house the other day, Kim says, what is wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. And I didn't know. That's the honest truth. Nothing. I was just in a bad mood for some reason. I don't know why. Thank God he brought me out of it. Set your affections on God. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You no longer have to be what you used to be because now you've taken on that name. Thank you, Lord. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Why? How? Why are you going to be able to do that? How are you going to be able to do that? Sister Clark, it's because it's not us. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Brother Clark, it's not us. Amen. But it's the love and the desire that we have placed in our heart for God because we have allowed ourselves, as that man said, amen, to step out of the flesh, if you will, and put on the things of God and let the desires of God now become our desires. Brother Josh read the scripture that faith without works is dead. And it was so funny because I had just been dwelling on that before I even listened to, and I clicked on that, it popped up, and I said, oh, I'll listen to his message a little bit of it, and I listened to most of it. And, and I chuckled because I almost turned it off because I thought, no, I don't want to hear what he had to say. And I thought, no, I want to. He said, he's talking about the scriptures, faith without works is dead. But Sister Angie, I had already typed this in. Faith without works is dead. 
love, passion, and desire is what put works into motion. Faith without works is dead. And I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be your love and your passion and your desire that puts those works into motion. We have to have it all. We have to have it all. We have to have the faith. It said Stephen was a man full of faith, Sister Tammy, and full of the Holy Ghost. We have to have it all if we're really going to be in love with him. We know he loves us. Let's not put Jesus. Jesus is not going to be in an abusive relationship. He's not going to be in one where he's the only one that loves and just accept you into his bosom. No, we're going to have to love him back. And don't think that means they're going to love you and they're going to like you and everything's going to be. When's the last time they looked at you, Brother Jerry, and said, oh, I see the face of an angel. That's what they said about Stephen, and yet they still killed him anyway. But Stephen refused to fall out of love with God. Lay this not to their charge. Come on. The old song says, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and 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 over again and again and again. Let's stand tonight. Amen. That's a real love story, folks. The love of God is a real love story. Be a part of it tonight. Brother Nate, dismiss us in a word of prayer, brother. Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly. Praise the Lord.